Matter is anything having mass and volume. Essentially, matter is anything that's made of atoms. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. In other words, it's the amount of stuff. It's a measure of the number of atoms and the type of atoms. It's how much stuff. That's what we mean by mass. This dumbbell has a certain mass. There's a certain amount of stuff in it. And no matter where that dumbbell is located, anywhere on the Earth, under the ocean, on the moon, floating out in deep space, its mass, that is, the amount of stuff that's in it, will not change. Weight, on the other hand, while being related to mass, is not the same thing. Weight is the pull of gravity on an object. Weight very much depends on where the mass is. Is it on the surface of the Earth? Is it on the surface of the moon? Is it at the center of the Earth? And so on. When we say volume, we refer to the space that an object occupies. Some objects can change their volume. Common units for volume include the liter, the cubic decimeter, the milliliter, and the cubic centimeter in the SI system. It turns out that a liter is a cubic decimeter and a milliliter is a cubic centimeter. I would memorize those. When we refer to the state of matter, we're referring to whether it's a solid or a liquid or a gas. We're going to leave plasma out of this one. And an atom is a basic building block of matter. I don't want to say the basic building block of matter, but is certainly a basic building block. There are about a hundred different kinds of atoms. They're listed on the periodic table, and often it's useful to think of a particular type of atom as a particular type of Lego. An iron atom is, say, a 2 by 2 blue Lego. An oxygen atom is a 2 by 4 red Lego, that kind of thing if you can imagine roughly 100 different types of Lego. Elements contain only one type of atom. Monatomic elements consist of unbonded identical atoms. That is, when they're in their element form, they don't form molecules. We can think of monatomic elements as walking alone down the boulevard of broken dreams. Some examples of monatomic elements are iron, aluminum, copper, helium. Most of the elements on the periodic table we consider to be monatomic elements. This example right here, we could maybe model that as copper atoms right next to one another. Here, a collection of helium atoms. Polyatomic elements consist of several identical atoms bonded together. That is, in element form, they do form molecules. The most important of these are the diatomic elements, which are these seven right here. Sometimes we refer to them as the Hoberfinkel twins. In terms of where these elements are on the periodic table, if you remember this mnemonic, 777, seven, seven, that will help you remember which ones the diatomic elements are. Of course, the word Hoberfinkel is itself a mnemonic device. But if you start with element seven, which is right there where I've made that red circle, and you draw a big seven, and you count to seven, you will find the seven diatomic elements. Now, if you start with nitrogen, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. This one's iodine right here. And then number seven is way over here in the upper left, hydrogen. Those are the diatomic elements. Other polyatomic elements are phosphorus and sulfur. And you can see that those elements on the periodic table are stuck right in the armpit of that seven. Phosphorus tends to come in clumps of four atoms. Sulfur tends to come in clumps of eight atoms. Allotropes are different forms of the same element in the same state of matter. Oxygen has these two allotropes, oxygen gas, which is normally found as O2, and ozone, which is also a gas, which is three oxygen atoms bonded together. Carbon has several allotropes. Elemental carbon, which is essentially carbon atoms not bonded to one another, sort of atoms 
standing next to each other with their hands in their pockets. Graphite, diamond, buckyball, all of these have different configurations of carbon atoms, but they're all solids. Those are allotropes of carbon. A molecule is a neutral group of bonded atoms. If we look at this table, we might symbolize one oxygen atom with the letter O, because O is the symbol for oxygen. And we might model it like a circle. An oxygen molecule, oxygen is a diatomic, so we would write the chemical symbol as O2, and we would model it as two circles touching each other, indicating that they're bonded. If we were to write two unbonded oxygen atoms, we might write a coefficient of 2 in front of the O, and when we model it, we'll draw those same two oxygen atoms, but you can see that now they are not bonded. Similarly, if we model a phosphorus atom as a red square, a phosphorus molecule, remember that phosphorus is a polyatomic element, it pals around in groups of four, we might model a phosphorus molecule like that. To represent four unbonded phosphorus atoms, we might write four in front of the P. You can see that depending on whether we write, if we look here at phosphorus, a subscript, that's referring to those atoms being bonded. If we write a coefficient out front, that simply means that we have to write that many of those atoms. So, Elements may consist of either molecules or unbonded atoms. The chemical symbols for the elements appear on the periodic table. Only the first letter is capitalized. If there are two letters, only the first one is capitalized. You can see here the noble gases. They all have two letters, and only the first one is capitalized. Final thoughts on matter and the elements. 1. Matter is anything made of atoms. Weight is a measure of the pull of gravity on a mass. Volume is the amount of space a sample of matter occupies. 2. Elements are samples of matter that contain only one type of atom. Most are monatomic. The Hoberfinkels are diatomic. Phosphorus and sulfur are polyatomic. 3. A molecule is any group of bonded atoms. Those atoms may be of the same type, or they may be of different types.